there he is, right? That one? Try that one, see what he is. No, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not reaching to the... Oh, he actually, he does look good, doesn't he? He looks better. Yeah. He's moving this way just a hair. Oh, don't take off. Oh, what a catch! What a catch! That was. What a catch! Holy mackerel! <laughs> hey man, I'm here with Stephen Sullivan. Good to see you. This will be the you. second time I've fished with you. Yeah. And uh, first time we had Jamie in the boat. I did. I understand he was working today, but uh, man, great to be with you. Congratulations on your tournament success. Thank you. Whooped my butt at Dale Hollow. Nah, I don't think that was the case. Yeah, you did. You barely got like and squeaked by, and you were fishing by yourself. Well, but I had too. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. I. I wasn't fishing by myself totally. I had Kent Driscoll in spirit. He, he showed me where to go and we fished pretty hard for the few days there. But you've been doing really well ever since then, right? Well, I, You've I, had a third place finish, a second place finish. I did, I've had some success. I've also had my tail kick pretty regular too. It's you know, kind of like gambling. You, you never hear about the losses. Yeah. You I, know what I mean? It's kind of like when I used to play golf. I only remember that one good shot I hit. Yeah. So. But I'm excited to fish with you today because I think we're going to get an, some insight that a lot of people on Fish Eat Live who uh, watch the show and understand kind of the technology that has kind of come at us like a freight train yeah. with this forward-facing sonar. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, adapting it to, you know, help them be better spider riggers or help sure. them to be better... Uh, brush pile fishermen or or single pole jigging which is, seems to be kind of the tournament route would you agree i would totally agree but one thing a lot of people have questions about are their settings and how to identify those mondo crappie yeah well i you know when i'm not tournament fishing i spend the majority of my time and it's what i really enjoy is fishing with local people uh -huh. kids i really enjoy and they're good at it <laughs> quicker yeah. than older people and our adults are but you know, I have a lot of older friends that know more about fishing in their pinky finger than I'll, and probably forgotten more than I'll ever know, but they want to learn live scope and they don't have a lot of experience. And I've got about five years of experience with it and I don't claim to be the best, but I have learned some tips and things to look for to identify bigger fish. And obviously that's what we work on for tournament fishing. Yeah. And you know, here in our lakes here in North Mississippi, the big four, everybody calls them, the crappie have to be over 12 inches to keep them to be a legal crappie. And so you have to literally find 12 big fish to have a fish fry. Exactly. You know, most places in the country over a 12 inch fish is a pretty big fish. And I oh. consider it a pretty good fish here. Pretty big fish. But anyway, learning what to identify on that screen and not wasting time catching fish that aren't really what you're looking for. You know, that's what a lot of guys I find don't understand. You know, they'll say, I went out and I'm getting better. I'm catching fish, but I only caught three keepers. And so I'm trying to help them do that. And then also use the screen, maybe some tips on the settings and what to look for to try to find bigger fish. Let's do it, Stephen Let's Sullivan. It, I'm excited, buddy. I'm excited, yeah. buddy. I'm looking forward to this, Boom. bud. Yeah, good to see you again. Good and uh, what a wonderful topic to share with everybody. You know, a lot of people, some fishermen are very secretive and they keep their tips and their tricks to themselves and you know I've told several people that you know when that person passes that so does that information unless you pass it along and that's kind of what fish eat live is all about so let's do it man let's do it man I'm looking forward <laughs> to it I have no secret well, guys ask me all the time they say look how do y'all guys find those big fish tournament fishing or, right or I have guys a lot that say you know I'm catching fish but I'm not catching keeper fish because ours have to be over 12 inches to keep them mm -hmm. they got to be bigger fish and so one of the probably the most important ingredient to me is is keeping your depth setting constant if you can okay i keep mine on 20 feet uh here in mississippi 90 percent of the time even if you are if I'm in eight Even foot of water, I keep it on 20 if feet. If you're in 30 feet of water. If I'm in 30 feet of water, we're in 27 right now. I can't see the bottom. We've got it on 20 feet. Okay. The reason why I do that is 
keeping your depth range at the same level helps you keep the reference of the size of the fish on the screen the same. So yes. what I mean by that is if you run your bottom range up, it let's say you put it on 10 feet. It widens these squares. Let's do it. Right? You know, let's do it. All right, let's look at these little small shad right here. Uh -huh. Now let's let's go up. Look how huge they are. Oh, look. those are giant crappie yeah, now. They're like giant crappie. <laughs> so okay. it makes it more difficult to identify fish. Now here we've got a pretty nice fish coming here, guys. We're zoomed out at 60 feet. And uh -huh. look, let's pay attention to this detail. First of all, we can see extra uh, ghostly looking spin. Uh-huh. And then number two. If I look at these lines, this fish is completely taking up two blocks on here. Yeah. Maybe even getting out of two blocks a little bit. Yeah. Now, this is going to be your keeper crappie in Mississippi. This is not a giant. This is not the mambo like we're looking for. Yeah. On my particular screen, and it's different on different size screens, I used to run a 12. And a, a fish that was over two lines on a 12-inch screen might be a mambo. Okay. But on this 16-inch screen, it's a little more magnified. Right. And so a fish that's taken up, just like this next one coming here, he's taken up, pretty much taken up two lines zoomed out like that. You can be pretty be west, uh, you know, rest assured that this is a keeper fish. 13, 12-inch crappie. Exactly. Okay. That's what, this is probably a 13-inch crappie, 12 and a half inch crappie. Okay, so depth we've got. Now, what about how far out do you look to get that square? It looks like you've got 60 feet out there. You know, I've got 60 feet, and it really doesn't matter as much on the forward range. We can, we can on the forward range, we can click it out here. And we can get to 90 feet, and that and he fish still takes still, up two. Still taking up the same amount of square. So on the forward range, it doesn't matter as much. Okay. And it's kind of where you get comfortable looking. And and to me, it, a lot of that depends on how many fish are in an area. Obviously, if there's not many fish, I'm going to zoom out further. Yeah. And I'm going to look for fish further out. Okay. And I tend to do that tournament fishing. And then when I see the one that I want to go to, let's say it's this one, you know, then we start motoring towards him and we can start zooming in. Now that helped us see that that was actually two fish together. Yeah, but one one of them's probably a keeper one of them's, there. That one back of them's close. one maybe. Yeah. yeah, one of them's close. I got you. But we can start zooming in, start going to fish. We got a decent fish coming here. Yeah. And uh, we can start zooming in. And my personal preference is, and I think a lot of guys is that when I get ready to start catching it, I go to 30 feet. 30 feet. You know, 30 feet is a good range. If you're much more than that, sometimes it's hard to tell exactly how close your bait is to the fish. Right. And um, anyway, that gives me enough screen though to work with, to get prepared, to get lined up, get my baits in the water, get them lined up and get them on the fish. Okay. But paying attention, a lot of guys I notice turn the grid overlay off. I don't ever do that. Like I said, I'm looking at these lines top to bottom, and that's giving me a real good reference as to what size these fish are. And it helps you skip over the ones you don't exactly. need to waste your time. Not wasting time. And tournament fishing is all about time management. It's time management. You yeah. don't want to be catching fish that you don't need to be catching. Right. You know, and if a guy's looking Driscoll is screaming Kirby right now because <laughs> I'm notorious for just trying to catch every single darn fish. Did you fish. say he was screaming, Jamie? No, no he I'm said, oh, oh Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. Jamie and I are in the same boat. Jamie wants. Uh, Jamie likes to catch every fish we see, and I don't blame him because it is fun. It is fun. Yeah, it's a but, video game. You know, hopefully in a minute, though, uh, we're going to see. Uh, I was out here last week, and I haven't been since then, but... You know, this is obviously a group of fish, but hopefully in a second too, I hope they're gonna cooperate for me today and we're gonna see one of these mambos. They're out here. It's right there. Yeah. The only thing that I'm gonna tell you too today is, and you, everybody that's been keeping up with fishing has probably heard this over and over, and if they're fishing, they've probably experienced it. The water is so muddy right now. They have our lakes down. Uh-huh. That typically, if we're not, we're targeting fish. It's hard to ride over fish like that, but we're targeting fish that are in at least 10 feet or higher up closer to the surface range. If yeah. they're below that, we just cannot get them to bite right now. I've, they're not very active in February and they just won't chase it up. They I fished with Clay Blair yesterday on Enid and we never dropped down past four or five feet. Exactly. It's crazy. The, the higher, the closer they are to the surface, 
generally the easier they are to catch. Yeah. You can get some to bite down in that 8, 10 foot range. And if I see a big one, I'm certainly going to try hard to catch him. Yeah. But it is more difficult. You know, I've heard all kind of theories, and I'm not a scientist. I don't know. I've heard guys uh, that I respect a lot say that they're sunning. Uh, I've seen guys say that they're feeding when they're up there. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know the reason why some of them sit up high. My personal feeling is is that the water's really cold down there right now, and the ones that are feeding and are going to be more active when you're going to be active when they're feeding like the warmer water that stores the surface yeah because yeah. i've gone out at night and fished and i've noticed that they're up there at night so to me that kind of yeah. dispels the myth of maybe sun and not that i'm not saying that's wrong but i just think they're more active when they're yeah. at the surface myself Stephen, thank you for these incredible tips now we have kind of put the cart in front of the horse and right. everybody that's watching this is screaming they're like yes i love it but how do you get that screen so clear first and foremost right well, can you go through your settings real quick absolutely and like you said every lake is different clarity and and i think every sonar unit's a little different you know here's yeah. a nice fish right here several of them oh yeah nice as you can see the shape you can tell that's a crappie yeah i mean you can see that round you yeah know, it's not a catfish it's not this long you know that's a nice crappie that we kind of got wind of the boat and ran away from us but to, to get to our settings you know i think every unit's a little different and certainly every lake and the water color and uh, particles in the water and all that have an effect on it in general what i do is i generally run my tvg off uh. And I'm not a Garmin expert and a live scope expert. I know it has to do with total variance gain and how fast the signal's going in and out, but I, I yeah. don't understand all that. All that I know is most of the time I run that off. Right. It does create a little slight lag when you run time variance gain, right? It does. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that could be the fraction of it taking it or spitting it out without you setting the hook. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I typically leave that off. Uh, I typically leave my noise reject and my ghost reject on low. Okay. Um, uh, I find that uh, as you turn them up, um, obviously you're getting less detail. Right. You may be getting a clearer screen, but I get a pretty clear screen with them on low. Okay. And so I pretty much keep them on low, and then that gives me more detail. I can generally see the fish and my baits better. Okay. And so I usually run those two on low and TVG off. And, you know, my color gain, I like it hot. I keep my color gain up here uh, uh, somewhere in the uh, usually 90% uh, range. Okay. And my color limit, I usually run in the 45 to 55 range. Okay. Uh, those are, I, I usually leave my bottom fill off. Yeah. I don't like all that clutter down there. I think I can see the fish most of the time uh, on these hard the bottom, bottom lakes better okay. with it off. So I usually keep it off and I keep trails off. Uh, as far as colors, that's just personal yeah. preference. I don't think that really makes a yeah. lot of difference. Uh, but you can see I've got my noise reject on low. I've got my ghost reject on low. I've got my TVG off. And uh, I feel like I've got, uh, obviously i feel like i've got a really uh a clear really screen. nice clear screen here yeah. and so i can see the fish really well and we should be able to see my baits really well in just a second this is a really good fish right here let's let's he, prove these uh, theories what do you say he's down yeah where he probably won't bite this guy up here would probably bite but i'm gonna tell you i'm not trying to i'm not i'm not trying well, to, we're gonna try a big fish for yeah this, this is a nice fish Let's give I, mean, it up. I mean, it's an absolute giant, but this is this is a good fish. Yeah. This is the kind of fish that guys want to catch if they bite. Uh oh. Uh oh. He bit. Jeez, yeah, so that's a keeper. I thought he was. He is a keeper. Yeah. Come here, little guy. And boy, that didn't take long when you got your sonar <laughs> dialed in. No, it does not. And un unbelievably, this fish isn't near as fat as some of the ones that uh, that we've been uh, been seeing. He's a little bit smaller. You think than it's that. a male? I uh, maybe. Maybe a male. Maybe, maybe because they you're going to find in a minute we're going to catch one, and they they are obviously this is big fish season. Did you say I'm going to catch one? Yeah. All right, I'm going to go. That's a big one. Do I need to get a net? 
I'm preemptively saying, do I need to get it up? This is Dang some good it. fish here, but I got him. I got him. I got him. You got him? I got him. I don't think we're nervous. Makes, <laughs> makes nervous. Yeah. Ah. Oh my God. How about that, buddy? Dude, show it right there. How about that? I'm going to get this other camera out so you can see How this. About that? Now this this is what folks want to come to our big four of Mississippi and Sardis has got them too. Look at that fish. This is on Sardis. Look at the belly on that fish. That Look a, how thick that fish is back. 210, is. 220, you think? Yeah, I think so. I think it's probably exactly that. I, obviously, you've looked at me and crappie. I, I'm going to try not to arch his slip too much. Yeah. But that's, uh, I, I think that's probably 215, right? yeah. like you said. Look at, look at that iridescent color you're talking about. That's that purple. Yeah. looks like a wild turkey's feathers yeah. to me. It's and it beautiful. also looks like that color butler gold. It, is. it does look like that color. Yeah, butler. and that's why that's one of my favorite colors to yeah. start with. That Mardi Gras has a little bit of that. Iridescence? Look, yeah, the iridescence as well. But anyway, I mean, that's, that's I, can, uh, yeah. I can do this all day long. So if we had a tagging gun, we would tag that. Absolutely. And that would encourage other people to turn it loose as well. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I heard that there might be some collaboration or some prizes coming out, something like that, I heard that. in the very near future. I'm not going to give it up because I might get in trouble. But right. Right. anyway, I'm there's some big things coming Let's with conservation in, in Mississippi with goes. those giant crappie. Awesome. Steven, I wonderful know. job. <laughs> That feels good. That does I feel love it. it. I'm excited for you. I love you. it, man. I love it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I, I just tell you, uh, it never gets old. It never it gets, gets old. old. I love He came out of the water. <laughs> literally, literally set the hook and fish coming out of the water to get it. It's awesome. Woo! Mardi Gras, baby, Mardi Gras. Oh, there's a bigger fish right there. It's a little bit on the show. That's a keeper though. 13 inch crappy. I got to try your sugar. Oh yes. Yes, 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 yes. Down yes. a little bit. Oh, you're going that one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not down to ignition. Three, two, one. Ooh, yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what is it about these damn fish? Oh, oh man. Oh, my gosh. I'm not trying to action. I think... You know, I think that a lot of the allure of crappie is not just how exciting and how elusive they are, but just knowing that we could, you and I could share that fish That's and, awesome. and have a delicious meal. That is. That is incredible. That's awesome. Incredible. Yeah. Man. Stephen, thank you so All right, much, man. dude. Thank for you for coming and stuff. doing it. Oh, yeah. my gosh. This is probably going to awesome be, day. One, I'm going to predict probably one of our most viewed um, things because people have questions about this stuff. And with your insights and, and what little knowledge I know, I hope you guys pick something up, tell some people about Fish Eat Live, uh, subscribe. We want to continue to see this channel grow. And I'm going to try to catch that one. Uh, we can't <laughs> we can't quit with that on the screen. We want you to uh, When's it gonna come end? back every Sunday and yeah. 
Tell some people, like I said. Yeah. Leave some comments. We love comments. And maybe you know something about live scope that we don't. Exactly. Every time I go, I learn something. Share the share knowledge. It. It's share the only it. way we can promote this sport uh, and keep it going and, and launch it to being even better than it already is. No don't doubt. you agree? I agree. You so, got to share it. Thanks, guys. Have Thank a great you. day. God bless. Now, I'm going to pitch on this fish. I'll catch you. Which one? The back one? This one. The, that one? This okay. one. At four, well, he's on your side. That's it? all right. You sure? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're catching. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm reaching things. around, and I think I just caught the last one. Didn't I? Uh oh, Houston, we have a problem. Got him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> have a great day, and God bless. <laughs> He knows Les Smith is cooking. He's Les Smith get out is of cooking. That's right. <laughs> well, he may have a, he may have a tag along show up. Dude, that's stellar. Thank you so much for watching Fish Eat Live. Our mission is to demonstrate the benefits of the Fish Eat Live lifestyle. We look forward to educating, entertaining, and attracting you to the healthy lifestyle of the great outdoors. We're definitely going to have some wholesome family fun on the water every Sunday at 6 p.m. So hit that subscription and that notification bell because we want you to come be a part of this.